The cells that make up our body talk to and communicate with each other, just like we talk and communicate with each other. If you wanted to talk to your friend sitting right next to you, you'd probably just turn to them and speak to them directly. Similar to how cells that are near each other can communicate by sending out local signals that can be directly sensed by neighboring cells. But if you wanted to talk to your friend that lived across the country, you'd probably have to pick up the phone and call them up to talk. In a similar way, cells that are far away can also talk to each other, such as your heart and brain cells in the fight or flight response, where your brain assesses a situation as scary or dangerous and your cells communicate, resulting in your heart racing. One of the ways cells do this is through small particles that are made in our bodies that interact with proteins that exist on the surfaces of our cells named G-protein coupled receptors. These receptors work like tiny radio towers that stick out of our cells and sense these small particles in our bodies the way that radio towers receive radio waves. These tiny radio towers then transmit the external signal to the cell's interior, causing our bodies to produce a biological response. As the name of the receptor implies, G protein coupled receptor, these receptors interact with or couple to other proteins that live inside the cell named G proteins. These G proteins act like radio tower technicians for our tiny radio towers where they help fine tune the signal so that the correct message is interpreted by the cell. I'm interested in the beta-1 adrenergic receptor, a G protein coupled receptor that controls several heart functions, including the fight or flight response. Heart disease, one of the leading causes of death in the US, can be caused when the biological response from the beta-1 adrenergic receptor is activated too much over long periods of time. Using very powerful microscopes that visually track proteins that interact with one another, my research shows that unlike previously reported, the beta-1 adrenergic receptor can couple to two types of G proteins, one that amplifies the signal and can lead to disease when overactivated, but also to one that silences the signal. If we go back to the radio tower analogy, it's as if the G proteins are acting like rival radio tower technicians, where some are on a mission to help the tower send the message, but others are on a mission to destroy the message. Several drugs are already out on the market that block the beta-1 adrenergic receptor. However, simply blocking it stops it from interacting with both G proteins, creating a further imbalance in the cell. If we can instead figure out a way to target just the silencing pathway in disease settings, then we may be on the road to helping heart failure patients find the right balance. And my work is providing the foundation for these discoveries. Thank you.